What's up guys, welcome back to Shrek, welcome back to another video, and in today's video we are back with the E91 M3 potential build, you know what I'm saying? So, we got our first part for our E91, this is a rear door, the exact door we needed, it's the only door he was selling, so thankfully we got the door that we needed for that car, and it's actually a complete door, so actually ours, we can actually part that for some parts, and this one is a complete door, so it should be li literally just direct plug and play. The only thing you have to replace is that door card, I'm going to be getting a full black interior, I saw you guys' comments, yes, the plan is to definitely get a full black interior um, but yeah that's the first addition to the new build as of right now I'm heading to my boy Erlon's place to pick up his engine hoist and uh, pretty much like the engine stand and the the, the the thing that the cherry picker and all that stuff this will be the first time guys we're ever pulling a motor out of a car very exciting stuff and also gonna be showing you guys how much money that we could potentially make off these parts it's again very important I've already sold a couple things I'm gonna be trying to make a full list of it and then in one video I'm gonna try to mention all this stuff right before we actually start swapping everything over from an m3 again we're still also looking for an m3 donor car if it takes us a little bit longer than expected we might just move that car to our backyard um, and just work on the Supra until we get a donor car but speaking of the Supra some news on the Supra the body shop guy is working on it and he's saying so far so good it's definitely fixable um, it's just a matter of time as in this point so I'm super 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 excited as soon as the body shop gets done with that we're gonna pick it up the door should be on there um, we're gonna try to reassemble as much things as possible and then take it down to the paint shop so we can get all that stuff painted without further ado let's head down to our launch place we gotta get all that engine stuff guys so that's a halon right there we just swung by his house we got all the engine stuff so now that we're ready to go uh let's head over to my house right now and now that we're officially back home i'm waiting for a lot to pull up so we can actually pull that thing out together also i noticed in the last video you guys told me that the microphone on this camera is not that great but the quality is pretty good i also turned off that that feature that makes my skin look like i'm a million bucks mainly because you know we we don't fake it you know what i'm saying this is god given and i'm happy with it any users a new microphone is on the way probably the most expensive microphone i ever purchased either so this camera setup hopefully i don't break it anytime soon it's my most expensive camera setup and also this microphone is the most expensive microphone i've ever purchased in my life but i want the quality to be a lot better so it's definitely well worth the investment but anyways now that we're with the wagon i have a lot of people hitting up for parts but not many people are really showing up and i'm selling my stuff like super cheap like i'm asking like 25 bucks a fender 50 bucks a, a bumper i did sell the hood for 50 bucks the seats i'm literally asking like 25 bucks a piece like everything's cheaper than even pick and pull prices but i mean people aren't really showing up i don't know why i guess over time people will so I'm just taking things off and I'm putting in the backyard for now. But in the meantime, guys, the goal is to remove this entire front end. We're talking engine, suspension, everything. Like I said earlier, I did sell a couple things and I'm going to be making a whole list of it. And hopefully I'm going to be breaking it all down uh, once we actually get as much things off of this car that we need to remove. But yes, guys, hopefully once Erlon gets here, we're going to start taking things apart, start draining things. And uh, yeah, it should be pretty fun. Alright, so my boy Erlon just made it, guys. He's gonna be helping me pull the beast out. When I say beast, I mean N52. <laughs> to put in the beast into this car but in the meantime guys this thing is fully straight piped we literally just have the cats on there um the primary cats right the rest of the things are fully removed so uh first startup guys no engine i mean uh no exhaust no resonators no muffler no secondary cats let's see how this thing sounds guys Jeez. <laughs> bro this is a v8 <laughs> that is way too loud <laughs> Oh my god, dude. It stinks. It does stink. Yeah, this thing is uh anyways, guys. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and just pull her out.
Guys, I did not know. I thought all the wires go into the cabin. It looks like the disconnect right here, bro. That's sick. And then these, um, they should actually be direct plug and play, right? To the, uh, I don't know if they should be or not, but. Yeah, most of these, I think, will plug directly into the. M3 one? M3 a. Okay, that's gonna be so sick. And then it'll just drop everything in here from the M3. Oh, I didn't know, that. I didn't know that's how that works. That's crazy. For those of you guys who've never pulled out an engine before, literally the engine harness and everything connects right there. And you can, I guess we'll figure it out once we actually pull it all out, but I can't wait to see the engine base super clean. We're definitely gonna be stripping it down, cleaning it off, and probably getting it painted so super excited for this guys so uh as you guys saw uh Erlon pretty much tore a bunch of the things off the car uh what he also did over here he didn't have to remove the starter but we did remove the starter we also removed the intake manifold um as of this point uh we also did strap a seat belt whatever what, just a normal seat belt right you rec why do you recommend a seat belt instead of like a rope or something i don't i don't recommend anything oh you don't recommend anything no. all right i don't want to get sued <laughs> no recommendations no strong. recommendation your personal opinion why would in your own personal opinion why would you use a seat belt all these weaves yeah this thing will pick this engine up and hoist, hoist it around all day now if it's frayed or whatever you want to be careful because it'll keep praying but Okay, so that's just our method that we're gonna use. Uh, use your own method at your own risk. But any uh we went ahead and went down to AutoZone. We went to a few places to get this little guy. Um, when I say little, I mean huge. We need this to kind of remove uh, the front axles. That's the wrong size, bro. No. Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> no. So we have the right piece now. Um, we're trying to remove the front axles because uh, what we're trying to do is keep the suffering on, keep the front suspension on. So if we need to roll around this car, we can. But we'll also be able to actually drop the differential and remove the whole engine and transmission altogether. Um, so that's what we're trying to do. Um, hopefully, it'll work according to plan. So at this point, uh, we did remove the front axles. Um, what sucks about an all-wheel drive car is that literally there's a front differential that's mounted to the oil pan to the front of the engine. That's like a super pain in the butt to just do an oil pan job on an all-wheel drive car. Um, in terms of the drive shaft, I mean, the, this, yeah, the drive shaft, um, instead of actually just taking it off because it's a super pain, we decided to just cut it in half. It's not really worth much. We're not going to reuse it. We're not going to need it. Um, so that's what you just saw Erlon do it earlier. Um, but yeah, boy, at this point, I mean, we have the transmission, the two bolts holding the transmission mount on, right? And then... Uh, I think we just see motor mounts. Motor mounts. Okay. Yeah. Do we need to drop the subframe or no? No. Should be good. So you're pulling it out from the top, right? Okay. So we're not actually dropping it off the car. We're actually gonna be pulling it from the top. So again, this is my first time, so I'll show you guys how it's pretty much done. But honestly, guys, I, there's not as much things to disconnect as I thought there would be. Um, other than obviously we just cut the drive shaft in half. That's something we wouldn't normally do. But I mean, you wouldn't do it if you're swapping your engine because you're gonna keep it. If you're replacing shaft, it, yeah. But but this nobody has all-wheel drive cars yeah there's no m3 all-wheel uh, drive anyway so rancho there's 20 drive shows out there facts now. facts they're like 80 bucks too so they're not crazy so any hizzles um yeah at this point we're just gonna be disconnected also the final ac lines we have this big piece that connects straight into the engine normally i would disconnect it from the engine but since we're actually swapping this engine we might as well disconnect it from the top so it'd be a lot easier to pull out with the with the engine right there so without further ado let's go and get that bell boy out
Guys, <laughs> finally got this engine out. We got the whole subframe dropped and everything. It just made life a whole lot easier. Because this is an all-wheel drive car, guys, um, look at this front-end suspension thing. It's literally its own drive shaft for the front, its own differential for the front. Obviously, it's an all-wheel drive. This thing just looks, it's too much. There's just too much things going on. I'm super happy this is all coming out. Talk about weight reduction as well. Even though it's going to be a V8 in here, it's definitely going to be lighter than all this stuff going on. Um, and then over here, guys, here's where the money's at. <laughs> going to be taking off these two cats as well. We're going to be trying to strip down this motor, take off the transmission, take off stuff that's valuable to us. Probably either junk the transmission because it's bad or probably figure out why it actually is, um, you know, flipping out because I always kind of wondered why an N52 transmission jerks really harsh on second gear. My first ever 330i um, was an N52 and the second gear was like jerking really hard. So I'm going to probably take this apart, take off the oil pan, uh, I mean the transmission pan. No. What is that? Who's got a free socket? A 10 millimeter? Yeah, eat. Oh, this snap on. This is like 30 bucks <laughs> for just a socket. You know, never mind. I'm kidding. And look, it's, an, it's an E12, which is a popular BMW size. Oh, that's crazy. So it's sitting in your pan. Dang. Somebody, somebody, had, somebody has some money, yeah, though. Like the whole set is like 350 Sheesh. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that is you crazy. You go to Harbor Freight. Icon? Or, no, oh, no. Snap on. Snap on, guys. Did you hear that? You hear that? Whoever that had this car before us, or it is a mechanic. But I feel like his mechanic would have went back in there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's a $30 socket what the heck uh, but like I said guys probably it's, I'm just gonna take it apart for fun probably figure out what's going on with the transmission gonna junk it anyways the engine's still worth some money cats gonna be taking off a bunch of stuff we'll do that either on camera or off camera we'll see what we're gonna go ahead and do but in the meantime let's just get this thing out of here so the engine bay is all ready to go Don't mind my wife over there, she's vacuuming, so if it's a little bit loud in the background, I'm sorry for that. But anywho, it is the end of the video, guys, and we got some updates on the Super. I already posted it on my Patreon. Link's gonna be down below if you guys wanna check it out early. Hopefully, the update on the Super will be the next video. Um, but yeah, guys, we got an update on the Supra, and uh, the wagon's really, really, really coming uh, uh, apart. <laughs> so it's getting ready um, for, hopefully, a new donor car once once we actually find that donor car. I'm super, super, super stoked. That whole ending of the video, um, unfortunately, had I had auto.
audio over all of that, but for some reason it all like got corrupted or whatever. This new camera, it's kind of weird. I'm not really understanding exactly how to use all the settings. Apparently I clicked something on the second day on this camera that muted all the audio and all the files or something. And as I'm recording right now, I don't even know if the audio is recording, but if it is recording, I'll be able to post this onto the video. Uh, but yeah, guys, what you guys tell me do in the end of the video, which is cutting the steering wheel. Um, honestly, I wanted to just cut it for fun, but mainly I wanted to cut it to get to the uh, cluster because the cluster, uh, I'm gonna be selling it as part of the cast system with the key and everything. So for someone that has a bad FRM or cast system and needs a whole new key and all that good stuff with a new DME, I'm gonna be selling that as a whole on eBay. Those go for good money as well. Um, so pretty much, yeah, I just try to get as much things off of this as possible um, and that's what I kind of did. Hopefully in the next video or an upcoming video, I'm gonna be stripping down the motor as well. And uh, I mean, again, we have, I am just so, so, so excited for this E91 build. I know I've made a lot of promises over the years about doing specific builds, like for example, a uh, turbo 135. And I've made a lot of promises on big, big, big projects. And the thing is like, who, I, I'm gonna be honest. Like I honestly um, see myself sometimes when I'm building the car, I'm not truly enjoying it. Cause like as I'm getting into it, I'm like seeing, okay, and you know, five years down the road, if I was to keep this car, a turboed 135, would I truly enjoy it? And honestly, maybe, but the reality is I, I'm more of a show guy, like a show car kind of guy. I prefer a car based off of the looks and the spec more than the power. Like power is cool and all, but dumping a lot of money just on power for me, cause I don't normally enjoy it on a daily basis. Um, I don't know, for me personally, it's just not my thing. I know there's a lot of other channels that if you guys like power channels, you know, check out those channels. I do love adding some power. I do love putting exhaust modifications. I do love, you know, pushing an extra 100, you know, HP, but those extra 400 figures and stuff, it's just not me. For me, if I'm gonna be pushing that kind of power, spending that kind of money, I'd rather get it on a car that comes standard with that. Like for example, like my dream R8, buy a car with the 600 horsepower because the car is just made for that. I don't have to worry about it because it's got all wheel drive and all that good stuff. But anywho, long story short, so as I'm building this wagon right now, and I promise you guys, I'm gonna be building something crazy. Um, that promise, I wanna, I wanna be able to fulfill it because that car, end of the day, is gonna be something I'm so, so, so proud of. We could build an E91 M3 wagon. We're gonna have an M3 wagon driving around the city and uh, you know, whether I'm going fast or slow, no matter what, it's still an E91 M3 wagon, which is gonna be so sick. So yes, if you guys wanna support the build, make sure to check out that Patreon down below and I always post literally my day-to-day -day life on there as well. So for those of you guys who are wondering what's going on with the 328, the new mods, the new Ozza steering wheel that you guys got me hooked on. If you guys are wondering what's going on with the Supra and all that stuff behind the scenes and, and for those of you guys who are already on the Patreon knew that I pulled this motor out a couple days ago. So if you guys wanna be in the inside scoop, check out that link down below. But without further ado guys, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.